Hi, this is Glenda. Um, it's been a little while since I did a video because we had a week of temperatures that were around 44, which is 110 Fahrenheit. Um, and honestly, I just got so little done. Um, certainly nothing to video about. And we had our paper mate session and we had one lady come along who was not really a card maker and she was so daunted by what we were going to do that she didn't even hang around long enough to find out how easy it was. And it got me thinking about new stampers and new crafters and what we could do to perhaps ease them into it. A lot of people, if you're into um, the craft like this, will have somebody come along who'd say, I'd love to, to try it, but I don't know where to start. I haven't got any stuff. Um, and so I thought it could be fun to make up an imaginary crafter and perhaps go through a little journey of what they need to get started and um, how to do it most economically, especially if you're not sure how much you really want to get into it. And they look at those of us who've been doing it for a long time and, um, you know, we spend a fortune on it and you can do it without that. So I thought we'll start with a simple card and we'll see just how small a collection of, of stuff we can have to make it. So first of all we start by raiding the house. Um, you need something to work on so it could be um, this is a cheap cutting mat I think it comes in a pack of two for a couple of dollars at the um, cheap shop um, but it's just a kitchen cutting mat but it will do double duty as a smooth surface to work on and something to cut on. So, you know, raid the kitchen or buy something cheap, but you want something, I've seen one lady works on wax paper, that would actually drive me nuts, but that's what she does. Um, you could also perhaps work on uh, greaseproof paper or scrap paper. It is good to have some sort of washable surface though and especially for the card for today. So the next thing would be some scissors, a big and a small pair of scissors. So whatever you can find, but make sure they're sharp. If you haven't got sharp scissors anywhere in the house and you don't know how to sharpen them, get a pair of scissors. Um, if you're only buying one, then probably perhaps lean towards a smaller one. Um, and we don't actually need the scissors today, but scissors are a staple. So I'm putting aside the things we don't need today. Uh, you want a ruler, preferably with a metal edge, and a knife. And I think our new crafter is going to get a cutting system very, very quickly because I know this is going to drive me nuts just using a knife. Um, because when I started card making, I already had a guillotine. I never was in a situation where I didn't have some sort of paper cutter. So. We'll, we'll let our new crafter buy some things along the way and I suspect next week she'll have a paper cutter. And it doesn't have to be expensive. Uh, you also want a pencil and an eraser. You want something to poke things with. I found a knitting needle. It's a weird one. I don't knit anyway. Um, but a knitting needle to um, use as a pokey thing. So something like that. One of these big tongue depressors you get in the $2 shop um, to use as a bone folder because I I really like to have a bone folder to smooth my folds. Um, a popsicle stick if you can't, I think the big stick's going to be better. Uh, you want a little paintbrush. Um, these came out of a set that were like a dollar for 20 brushes or something and they're absolute rubbish. But at this point to start with, just any little paintbrush. Um, a little spray bottle of, um, to put some water in. Probably not like your big squirty cleaner bottle, something smaller if you can, but again you can pick these up at the $2 shop, but uh, just with some water and just a little cup with some water in it um, of some sort. Baby wipes I'm going to count as something you can raid around the house because all the new mums are going to have them already, um, and if not $1.50 at Woolworths for these and I think these are great because they don't get as soggy as the ones in the flat packets but just some sort of baby wipe for cleaning up, for doing your stamps 
all that sort of thing, baby wipes are essential. So uh, the next thing is it may be a case of going shopping or uh, raiding the kids stuff if you've got kids, but some just some cheap washable water-based markers. Um, they don't have to be posh, so you know you may well have something at home already. And some permanent alcohol markers. These are from the $2 shop. $2 for all those colours. Uh, it's a packet of 12. So they're useful too. So the two sorts of markers, water-based and permanent. Then we send them off to get a couple of specialist stamping things. I, I want this series to limit the stamp products to things you can get at $2 shops or the big discount shops where you don't have to step into a craft shop or go online for them. Um, we keep it simple. So an acrylic block, you're going to need that because the clear stamps are the cheapest way to get started. So you're going to need an acrylic block. It's also useful for other things and I think you get those in Kmart again for a few dollars. One good black ink. Um, this happens to be archival. My favourite is Versafine, but one good black ink stamp pad, not the sort you had for doing the old stamps in the old days where you put not negotiable or whatever. You want a, a craft ink. Again, I think came out and that would sell them, but that's perhaps my one exception. One sentiment stamp. Um, if they're mostly using birthday cards, get happy birthday. If it's sympathy or get well, maybe thinking of you, um, whatever the person is most likely to use most of, one good sentiment stamp. And then we're going to build a stamp collection, but slowly. So a flower stamp. You, I got these, um, I think at Cheapest Chips or something. They're a couple of dollars for the whole set. But I'm going to suggest one flower stamp of some sort to get started. Some double-sided tape. Um, again, you can get this at Kmart. It doesn't have to be anything special, just any double-sided tape. Some cheap bling you can get at the $2 shop. A packet of pearls, white pearls and clear diamantes. And that's where your alcohol markers come in because you can colour them. So we're going to have a packet of, of each of the sorts of bling. Um, and then of course you need cardstock. So, you know, a packet of ready-made blank cards with envelopes, something like that. Um, because you can't make cards without cardstock. So, uh, this is, I've put together a packet of ten, but you can imagine this is a, a separate bought thing and, and we'll see how we go with it. Um, so we'll get started on our card. So the first thing we do is fold it in half and no you don't have to have a scoreboard to do it, you can just very carefully fold in half, bring in your tongue depressor to smooth it and there's our card base. Then we're going to take a second piece of card and make our mats for it so that we layer it, because that just makes it look a bit more grown up. Um, so at this point what I would also suggest is you write down what a standard card is. So in Australia we use A5 card, your American sizes are a fraction different, but work out um, the card I started in metric and thought no, I'm going to stay to inches. It's eight and a quarter by five and three quarters is my card. So when I fold it in half, it's going to be four and an eighth. So I want to make two mats, three and three quarters by five and a half, and three and a half by five and a quarter. Um, and if you've got that written down, if you don't have a cutting board, then it's just going to make it simpler if you don't have to think about what your measurements are each time you do it. So we're going to take our card and mark it at three and three quarters. Draw a line. And you don't have to draw a line, I just find it easier. And 
we want it to be five and a half this way. not look very straight. I am so used to just whipping out my cutting board. Like I say, I think our crafter is going to get a cutting board very quickly. Okay, I did not make that very accurate. By any stretch of the imagination, I have no idea what I did wrong. Try it again. See, if I'd gone straight to cutting, then my cardstock would be ruined. Okay. I hope that's straight. See the advantage of. Oh, I hope this is. Yes, it is. <laughs> Sorry, I'm cutting on this mat that was new and then I wasn't quite sure if it was cuttable. I'm sure it was just a cutting mat. Um, just put that to the side. So the other one is going to be three and a half by five and a quarter. So we're going to mark it at. And it's a good idea to rub out any pencil lines you might have left. Okay, so that's our top one. Put that aside. So we're going to choose a couple of uh, three colours I've chose of the watercolour markers. And I'm going to choose slightly ones this time. And on our mat we're just going to scribble some colours. Just randomly. Now this is where you might want to flip your board because where I've got the lines, these lines may, from cutting, you probably can't see them, but um, because I just cut on it, it uh, those lines may show up on the card. So just flip it over before you do this bit if that's what's happening. Um, obviously, if you can get a proper cutting mat or something, but that's more money. So, you know, we're starting off our crafters, got absolutely nothing. She's on a very small budget. And then we're just going to spray it with some water. Bring in our card and just sort of smoosh it in there a little bit. Some more colour there. That's looking pretty. Just dab off if you've got a little bit on the edge and give it a bit of a shake without getting it on your clothes. And put it aside to dry. Clean up the ink. Hmm. 
no, where's my mat gone? Okay, well that's drying. Take one of the colours you just used and we're going to make our own uh, mat because we don't have any coloured cardstock yet. So we're just going to go around the edge Make sure you get right to the edge. You don't need to do the whole thing because um, you can only see the edge. Okay, so there's our mat. I'll just put that aside. Clean up any ink. And I'm going to take our permanent marker and bling before it went. And just choose a colour that sort of matches. Um, with these, your colour will be a lot paler on the stones than the marker. So the really light markers will probably hardly show up at all. But just pick three matching stones and colour them in. When I say matching, there's obviously different sizes on this sheet. our bling coloured and ready. We'll put that aside and give this a bit more of a wave because we don't have a heat gun yet. Okay now just decide which way up you want it to go and just take one of the flower steps blocks are so clean. I thought I'm not buying a new block for this but the, a new crafter would have a nice shiny new block so I cleaned all my blocks and they're very happy now. And there's the ink. Now if you have got a new stamp that you've never used before it is a good idea to test it um, especially with an acrylic stamp or well, with any really but just ink it up once and I'm just stamping on the back of the mat because nobody's going to see that. Ink it up and stamp it down and make sure it's going to give a clear image. So then we can ink it up again. Hold it completely steady and let the ink take. If you take it off too quickly, your image will be washed out. Now, take your sentiment stamp. Oh, and don't drop it on the card like that. I'm going to be a little bit careful because the paper's a bit curly because it's still damp. And I've stamped it crooked, but if you get an acrylic stamp for your sentiment, you can see it much easier to line it up. But I just grabbed a generic stamp. Then you use your baby wipe to wipe them off. sheet now um, just 
practice deciding which colours to use of the three. Just going to put some of the colour on the block and grab the paintbrush, put a bit of water on it, pick up the colour, just roughly colour this in just so it's got a bit more substance than the background. This, as I say, is a really crummy brush. I would suggest a brush that doesn't flop quite so much. stem you might just want to take the marker directly to it. It's going to depend a bit on what stamp you've got but as I say a basic flower stamp can be used for all sorts of occasions. And wipe off the block. Okay, give it another shake. And double sided tape is you're going to put your tape as close to the edges as you can without your sticky running over the edge. You could also use a glue stick, but you know, this crafter wants to get into card making, so double-sided tape is, is easier. But if you haven't got it, grab your kid's glue stick. And some in the middle, because we made it wet. Um, then you're going to want to tape the middle as well. Take off the back. Now, to line it up was a trick I had completely forgotten for a while. If you can get the corners right, the rest of it is going to be right. So line up your two corners and put your top layer down. And want some more tape. Sorry, that's diagonal corners. It's funny thinking about the things I learnt at the beginning. I'm remembering things that I learnt at the beginning and since forgot. So this is very good for me. Not worrying about the piece in the middle this time because my mat's not wet. So we do the same thing again, get the diagonals correct, and push down. Now, if you use your smaller pair of scissors, you can use them to pick up the diamantes sometimes. 
personally I prefer my little knife but we're starting with minimal supplies. Push your first one down. Oops. Just gently put on the next two till you get the placement right. happy with them just give them a push and there we go so there's a fairly simple card two stamps one ink pad um, and it's a, a good beginner project I think you've you've got something that looks homemade without be well handmade without being homemade something like that um, but I think that's not a bad introduction one um, to show what you can do with just things you've probably mostly already got and uh, we'll see how where our new crafter is taken uh, next time so I hope you like this idea and um, you know if you want to play along that'd be great too I'd love to see what other people come up with starting as a newbie and um, what can you do what can you make with without all the fancy tools and still make it look a, a nice card something special so um, Yes, if you do play along, I'd, I'd be thrilled. Um, and otherwise, you know, some suggestions for what our new crafter could be doing and, and what she needs to get along the way um, without spending a fortune. She's only got a little budget. So thank you for watching.